Hello, people. This is Dr. Wang here recording. Today, we are going to cover Chapter 3, Balance of Payments. Balance of Payments are those that uh, record all transactions between a country's residents and uh, the residents of all other countries. And uh, the balance payments could be decomposed into four major categories. The first is the current account, which is mostly related with the trade. The second is the capital account. The third is official reserve account. And the last one is called a statistical discrepancies. That's about mistakes and errors in the accounting. We want to ignore it, but uh, the number for the statistical discrepancy is just uh, too large to ignore. First, the current account includes all imports and exports of uh, goods and uh, services. So we have to be careful. Not only we're talking about merchandise commodities, but also the services like a hotel services, Disney park, insurance services. And the second is uh, the unilateral transfers of a foreign aid. In the previous episode, I mentioned that the United States aided the Mexican government to billion US dollars for them to boost up the economy. And that is considered a unilateral transfer. When we do the accounting, if we spend money, then that's a debit. If we receive money, that's a credit. If the debits exceed the credits, that means in international trade, we buy more and we spend more than we actually sell and receive. So when we do import, we pay money, pay US dollars. And then when we do export, we receive dollars. And when the import exceeded the export, so we call it a trade deficit. That's also when debits exceed the credits on the current account. If the credits exceed the debits, that means uh, with the money we make from exporting exceed the money we spend from importing, then this country, we are running a traded surplus. So the current account um, can be uh, further uh, divided into this uh, merchandise and services. Uh, so merchandise represents the exports. The merchandise export and imports represent tangible products like vehicles, like aircraft, like machineries, or agricultural products. And uh, the service export import um, mostly presents the tourism and other services like insurance. The difference between total export and the imports is uh, referred to as the balance of a trade. Trade basically cover uh, the balance of a merchandise trade, which is about a tangible goods, and uh, also the services, which is intangible. Another category here is a factory income payments. So the factory income is generated from a capital investment. However, it is characterized in the current account category. The factory income represents the income received from investors on foreign investments in financial assets. You see, when it's a financial assets, it's about a capital. Uh, but it's not in the capital account, but it's in the current account. So what are the income we're talking about here? These are interest generated from a loan investment or bond investment or any other type of uh, debt investment. It could also be dividend payments or um, the capital gains payment from an equity investment. The factory income, if we receive money from our investment overseas, then this would be a credit. If uh, we pay money to the foreigners for their investment in our country, then this would be a debit. And the unilateral transfers not just uh, include uh, the foreign aid, but also grants like uh, uh, the World Bank could have granted uh, a project in India. And for India, that's a unilateral transfer. And also gifts. If I transfer money to my uh, relatives in China, and this would be considered a transfer as well. The capital count here uh, measures the difference between U.S. sales of assets to foreigners and U.S. purchase of foreign assets. In 2009, the U.S. enjoyed about $281 billion capital account surplus. So surplus is uh, good. So we are making money more than the money we spend. Uh, so absence from a U.S. borrowing from foreigners, uh, this uh, surplus is financing our trade deficit. You guys are probably all know that uh, since the late 90s, U.S. is running a trade deficit. So we spend more money to buy goods from foreigners than the foreigners buy from us. And that deficit 
is uh, financed by our uh, capital surplus. So we receive the money back home from uh, uh, the investment area. So when the foreigners uh, made money from us in trade, they invested the money back into us, back into the U.S. So U.S. is in a health financial situation. And the capital county is uh, composed of uh, foreign direct investment, which is uh, uh, related with um, um, the buying factories, machineries, production lines, equipment, and setting up uh, new operations in the country. It also includes uh, portfolio investments. So these are our long-term investments. So what are considered long-term investment? Definitely the stocks and the bonds or long-term loans, this type of investments. The other investments here basically are short-term security investments. And the portfolio investment is also security investment as well. In the previous uh, example about Mexican peso crisis, I said uh, I mentioned about hot money. And a portfolio investment is actually hot money. They invest in liquid assets like stocks and bonds, which could be sell off overnight. The other investments are hot money as well. They invest in securities, which could be easily sold and purchased. And uh, what are the short-term investments here? Um, these could be banks, uh, acceptance notes, uh, repurchase agreement, uh, commercial papers, marketable securities, certificate of deposit, all you name it. So here is the balance of payments for United States in the year of 2009. You can see that there are two major categories, current account and also capital account. The credit means uh, we are receiving money from the foreigners. The debit means we are paying money to the foreigners, either uh, from a trade or from investment. In current account, you see exports is here. You see merchandise, service merchandise. Those are for tangible goods. You see services as for intangible product. And uh, there's also factor income. Once again, factor income re uh, refers to the income generated from a foreign investment. And uh, you see that overall, um, you have uh, exports and uh, imports for these three categories. Uh, and you also have a uh, unilateral transfers. Uh, the number here shows us U.S. Uh, receive less money than U.S. actually give to other nations. Overall, you see the current account is running a deficit. Okay, that's a, a negative of 419 billion US dollars. And the capital account is the opposite. So we spent a lot of money, of course, but we also made a lot of money. And most of the money coming from other short-term investments, you see that's a 616 billion US dollars uh, in the short-term securities, like treasury bills. And then the balance on capital account is a 281 billion dollars. If you combine these two numbers, you will actually see the total would be a negative number. You see negative of 419 plus positive 281, it is uh, a negative, uh, negative of 138 billion US dollars. However, the overall balance we see on our account is 52.2 dollars, okay? So you see, um, from a trade and investment, we were running a, a negative uh, account, but actually when we check our money, we have a summer surplus, $52 billion. So that uh, difference uh, is called a statistical discrepancy. Those are, those are mistakes and errors, or maybe money transferred through black market to the country. So that is a lot of money. That's a 190 billion US dollars that were off the record. But I think the errors, mistakes are a very small part of the, the discrepancy. Mostly, most of the discrepancy are determined by the secret transfers of money into the United States off the record. Okay, so after we have this overall balance of a positive 52.2, then there's an official reserve account, negative 52.2, to balance it out. So what is this uh, official reserve account? The official reserve account is used to round off the balance of payments and uh, it shows the means of international payment that monetary authorities of uh, a country have acquired or lost during the particular period. So what does that mean? So the reserves account 
includes gold, foreign currencies, special drawing rights, and nowadays um, gold is ex excluded from these uh, reserves, so it's mostly foreign currencies. And special drawing rights is uh, a portfolio of a currency developed by the International Monetary Fund, which is the central bank of all central banks of other countries in the world. So uh, when U.S. is uh, running this uh, overall uh, surplus, um, we are going to spend that money, $52.2 billion, to buy foreign currencies as our reserves. We may buy British pound, buy, buy Japanese yen, buy uh, euros, and the Chinese yuan. That uh, purchasing activities resulted in a cash outflow. So we spent the $52 billion to buy those uh, foreign currencies when we spend the dollars. So this is a debit. So that, that is used to round off this uh, overall balance. Okay, so whatever the overall balance is, the reserve account would be the negative of that. So when you have an overall balance surplus, just as I showed you in the picture, then uh, that means uh, the country has some uh, um, money to buy the foreign currencies for reserves, and that's a cash outflow. So on the balance of a reserve account is a negative. And if you add the uh, overall balance, which is a balance of a capital account and a balance of a current account all together, then you, when you add in the balance of reserve account, the total would be zero, or the balance of reserve account is a negative of the balance of a capital account plus current account. So let's look at the data here. When you look at this uh, export and import, you see uh, credits in this column and a debit in this column. So when we have a, a trade deficit, uh, that's a large number. And then we have uh, a trade uh, a surplus. Uh, that's uh, Then we have a surplus in the capital account. And then the difference between the two, uh, current account and uh, capital account balance. Uh, okay. So here's what I want to say. If we spend money in the international market, then we are supplying dollars so we can convert our dollars to euros, to pounds, to Japanese yen, so we can buy the stuff from the foreigners. That basically pulls a supply of U.S. dollars in the market. And when we receive money from the foreigners, they pay us with U.S. dollar, so they would demand dollars in the exchange market. They would convert their Japanese yen, British pound, Swiss franc into U.S. dollars, and that poses a demand of U.S. dollar. So right here, uh, we are looking at uh, the exchange rate of a uh, U.S. dollar in price of uh, other currencies combined. And there's no particular price. I'm not saying it's uh, uh, 0.5 pounds per dollar or 0.8 euros per dollar. It's just a, a uh, the general idea of a dollar price expressed in uh, different other foreign currencies or portfolio currencies. But it's no there's no point to to be very specific about the price here. All right, so if U.S. has accumulated this uh, overall balance, which is surplus, they will spend that dollar uh, to buy foreign reserves. And uh, as long as we spend the money, again, that's the supply of U.S. dollars, and that's gonna drive down the dollar price to a certain level because we have a, a extra supply for it. And here is the U.S. balance of payments over 30 years. And you will see that uh, the capital account is always running a surplus, and the current account is uh, always uh, running a deficit. And you can see they mirror each other. So that means, again, when we spend money, uh, lose money from international trade to the foreigners, then the foreigners will reinvest the money they made from into our uh, capital system. So the U.S. has a very healthy financial situation. In stark contrast, China has a very different situation. China has a lot of uh, capital surplus. It also has a lot of trade surplus, mostly from the United States. So China is always in a very big surplus situation, and they have nowhere else to spend the money. And that's not very healthy. The data before was uh, pretty old. Uh, and here I'm showing you the trade uh, surplus or deficit of the United States until now. The, the most uh, updated information I extracted from uh, the Federal Reserve website. 
So as you can see, uh, U.S. Steel is running a trade surplus. And in 2008, uh, late 2008, uh, the Federal Reserve developed a QE policy. QE stands for quantitative easing. That's about a massive print of money electronically. Uh, so after that, uh, the trade is uh, still uh, running a deficit. Does that pose a, a depreciation, downward pressure to U.S. dollar? It does. If we spend more money than we make from the foreigners, so the supply of dollars exceed the demand of dollars, so that would have uh, pose a trade uh, deficit and also that uh, uh, brings some downward pressure to U.S. dollars. However, U.S. dollar always has this uh, downward pressure from its uh, trade side. And it was uh, the same situation 20 years ago. It is the same situation right now. So I don't think the uh, downward pressure from a uh, trade uh, would uh, make a much difference to dollar exchange rate of uh, other currencies. And if we look at the capital side, so this is the net capital flows in the United States uh, from uh, 98 to uh, right now. That's the most uh, updated information I got from the Federal Reserve website. Uh, you can see that uh, after the quantitative easing, things have changed. Previously, we were running a trade surplus all the way. Do you see that? We're running a trade surplus. As I said earlier, our capital surplus is the financing our trade deficit. But uh, after 2008, then the surplus does not quite exist. So we are running a lot of a deficit here. Okay, so you see that we are running a lot of a deficit. So that basically means uh, we spend money, we uh, spend US dollars and invest in other countries more than the foreigners invest in us. So that makes the supply of dollars more than the demand of dollars. And this is another downward pressure of U.S. dollars. So uh, if we look at the uh, details of the quantitative easing of the Federal Reserve since 2008, and this is uh, a chart I made from the data. So we have this uh, QE implementing area, a period from uh, 2008 to 2014. At that time, uh, the Federal Reserve was uh, uh, printing money to buy securities so the blue curve stands for the securities they buy from the bank system. And this is uh, mostly federal, mostly treasury bills and also mortgage-backed securities. And then if they buy more securities from the banks, then the Federal Reserve would need to print more money. The orange curve stands for the reserves they print. And uh, so this is just a cash they print and uh, put in the bank's account. And then you see that uh, the Federal Reserve keep holding the um, securities for a while and the banks gradually use some of the cash. So their cash level reduced. That means some of the cash would be spent by the bank and circulate into the economy. And this orange curve actually stands for the bank reserves. That's the money the bank saved in the Federal Reserve. It's like a cash hold by the bank um, that they just uh, deposited in the Federal Reserve's account. The Federal Reserve printed a massive amount of money, uh, about uh, two over two trillion U.S. dollars, and before that, the all the all the cash in this country is less than one trillion. So the Federal Reserve has expanded the money supply dramatically over the QE period from two thousand eight to two thousand fourteen, and then part of the money uh, is uh, circulating to the economy. Not a lot. Uh, about uh, thirty percent of the money printed by the Federal Reserve had been circulating into the economy. Now, so the rest of 70% was still in the bank account, okay, was still in the bank's uh, account. These are not spent, so that does not create uh, supply of money in the economy. Uh, this 70% uh, of the bank reserves have nothing to do with the inflation because that money was not spent at all. It was put in the bank account always. And then we have this uh, post-QE stable period. Um, so basically, the Federal Reserve tried to um, sell off some of the securities. You see the securities, the Fed holds reduced because they sold back to the banks and they received the money back. So when they receive the money back, they just destroy the money. Well, it's just a, a chain of numbers, but uh, it's, you should see that the money is gone, evaporated. There's not much of a money supply in the economy.
Okay, so in the coronavirus situation, the Federal Reserve uh, also are doing the QE. Uh, they suddenly uh, released uh, another 100 billion US dollars. So, so here is a J curve. So the J curve basically means uh, if a currency depreciates, then the trade balance would have a, a this shape of a letter J. Easy, easy to understand. Let me draw a chart. The vertical axis stands for the trade balance, or we can call it the balance of a current account. And the horizontal axis stands for time. And this curve is different from the curve uh, we learned um, before, which is about the demand and supply of a currency. So that curve happens when the home currency depreciates. Let's say US dollar depreciates, and then the overall balance of, uh, and there's a change on the trade balance. So it will decline in the short run and eventually recover and increase in the long run. And they're going to decrease in the short run and then uh, increase in the long run. So why does it increase in the long run? Let me explain that. That is very consistent with uh, what we learned before. So let's say we have a, the uh, US dollar in our analysis. And uh, we're gonna draw the traditional demand supply curve of a dollar. So this is the quantity of US dollar in the international market. You can say it's the investment area or the trade area, just the international exchange market. All right, and the price of a dollar this time is uh, uh, expressed in other currencies Let's say that all the other major currencies, uh, pounds, euro, Japanese yen, and so on, per US dollar, okay? So US dollar expressed in other currencies, no matter which one, but uh, you get the idea, okay? So you have the demand of a dollar, and you have the supply of a dollar. In the trade scenario, the demand of a dollar basically is uh, US uh, export, okay? It's US export. So that comes from the foreigners who buy from us, and they will need U.S. dollars. They will need to convert their pound, euro, and yen to U.S. dollars. So that's demand. And the supply of U.S. dollars is a U.S. import. So when we buy from the foreigners, we will sell our dollars and uh, uh, construct a, a supply in the exchange market. After we sell the dollars, we get the euros, pounds, and the yen to buy foreign goods. Okay. So when dollar depreciates, then you will see uh, the dollar was not this uh, equilibrium anymore. So this was the uh, equilibrium situation, but now dollar depreciates to a new level, okay? So that basically means uh, dollar is uh, cheaper and with the same euros and pounds and all other foreign currencies, the foreigners can uh, get more US dollars and buy more US stuff. So US export will uh, go to the will increase, so the demand will increase from here to here. And for the supplies, when dollar becomes cheaper, our uh, currency has less purchasing power, we can buy less uh, stuff from the foreigners, so the supply will drop from here to here. All right, so what you see here is a U.S. export exceed U.S. import, okay? So U.S. export now exceed U.S. import, and uh, this basically is a surplus, okay? It's a surplus. Well, it's a, when U.S. has an export, that's considered a credit because we're making money out of the foreigners. When U.S. has an import, that's considered a debit where they are spending money to buy things from the foreigners, okay? So in the long run, when dollar depreciates, then U.S. will run a trade surplus, so that's what happened right here. So you have this uh, uh, trade surplus on the balance of a current account. What about in the short run? Short run basically means uh, we have uh, a short situation less than a year. Okay, let's say it's a six month. In international trade, the transactions are done in credit. Okay, in credit basically means uh, not in 100% cash, all right? So when we buy things, we are going to pay the foreigners. We're not paying them right now once the goods are delivered. Instead, we are, uh, we are uh, getting a bill from them. And to us, this is account payable. 
and payable. All right. Likewise, when we're selling this to the foreigners, we deliver our good to them, but we're not getting cash from them right away. Instead, we are going to uh, send them a bill and the, on our balance of payments is this uh, account receivable. Okay, this is your accounting information you learned before. Assume that uh, when we pay foreigners, what we pay them, of course, we're gonna pay them a foreign currency. We have uh, 1,000 euros to pay to the foreigners. And when we receive payments from the foreigners, they're gonna pay us US dollars, of course. So this is a US dollar, 1,000. Okay, so if dollar still stays stable, let's say if a dollar, one dollar equals to one euro, make things simple, then this uh, 1,000 euro will be converted to 1,000 US dollars. Do you guys agree? Yes. And then what's our balance? And uh, so six months later, we will receive 1,000 uh, US dollar from this account receivable. And also we will pay 1,000 US dollar to get 1,000 euros to pay the foreigners. All right, so what is our balance of a current account? It's going to give us zero. All right, so that's when the dollar does not depreciate. Now let me give you another situation if dollar depreciate. If dollar depreciate, then let's say two US dollar equals to one euro. All right, you see the dollar amount increases, but actually um, each dollar is worth only half euro. All right, previously one dollar is worth uh, one euro, but now it's only worth half euro. So that is situation. That is a situation dollar depreciates. If dollar depreciates for the same receivable uh, still is denominated in US dollars. This does not change. It's still, we're gonna receive $1,000 from the foreigners, but for the same account payable, 1,000 euro, instead of uh, getting $1,000 for that uh, bill, you are actually paying more US dollars. So it's uh, 1,000 euros multiplied by the new exchange rate, which is uh, uh, a dollar depreciation, and then that's uh, two dollar per euro. When you do the mass euro, euro would get canceled, so only dollar get left. So that's a two thousand dollars. So under the new situation, dollar depreciates. Instead of paying one thousand euros, you're still paying one thousand euros, but instead of paying one thousand dollars, you are paying two thousand dollars. Then your balance of a payment will be a negative one thousand dollars. Okay, so that's what happens when the home currency depreciates, then your balance of a payment would uh, climb and uh, run a deficit. This example basically shows you how the deficit comes from. All right, so in the short run, you are having a deficit right here. So we will do some exercise on the balance of payments. And I will give you a series of activities for you to characterize each of them and then develop the balance of a current account, the balance of a capital account, and the overall account. Just before we do that exercise, I want to show you some tips. So you should know what is a credit, what is a debit. So if we are receiving money, then that's a kind of credit. If we are spending money, as U.S. people, we are spending money, then that's a debit. So here are some exercise. Uh, the current account is divided into four finer categories. So what are this? So you should know the current account has an import and an export, but that's not how we divide that account. We should divide it into four kind of activities. These are merchandise goods, which are tangible, and also services, and the factor income come from the uh, income generated uh, uh, from uh, foreign investments, and we also have uh, unilateral transfers. So the correct answer should be B. The factory income consists of largely of interest, dividends, and other income on foreign investments, and this A is a correct definition of that. B is incorrect. Factory income is not a factors, uh, constructive factors of a production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship ability, they, all of this contribute to the growth of an economy. So these are economic growth factors. And C, 
Um, it is generally a minor part of national income accounting, smaller than the statistical discrepancy. Actually, it is smaller than statistical discrepancy for the United States, but uh, it's definitely not a minor for international for national income accounting. So A is our selection. So here is the list of activities, um, international activities I mentioned earlier. So we have a lot of them. So we are going to develop the balance of a current account, balance of a capital account, and all the other accounts. So let me copy paste them into Excel. So we have all these activities, and we're gonna do it one by one. The first one, a Swiss firm about $22 million worth of US commercial paper. When we say buy paper, you probably are thinking uh, print papers or toilet papers, all those kind of uh, countable commodities. However, commercial paper is a security. It is a short-term security issued by companies uh, to finance uh, their uh, short-term operations. So the category should belong to other investment or you can say short-term investment. Okay, and uh, is that a debit or credit? If it is credit, then I will put it as a positive number. If it's debit, negative. So if uh, the Swiss people buy from us, then we are making money, right? So that should be a credit. So that's a positive $22 million. And then the second one, Brazilian visitors spend $42 million visiting Orlando theme park in, in Florida. And what is that? Um, so basically, we are selling things. We are making money from the Brazilians, and uh, we're not selling tangible goods. What are we selling? We are selling tourism a product, which is a service. So we just call it a service. And uh, are we making money? Yes, US is making money out of the Brazilians. So that should be a credit as well. The third, American investors bought 20 million worth of uh, French T-bills. T-bills is uh, a T stands for treasury. So it's uh, issued by the uh, de treasury department of uh, France. And the uh, bills uh, is a short term of uh, securities. If it is a bond or a note, then these are long term. If it is a bill, it's a short term. And uh, are we spending money or are we making money? We are actually spending money to buy those uh, securities. And this is again short term investment, and we spend a twenty million dollar worth of uh, um, twenty million dollars. Uh, number four, U.S. gave Mexico twenty million dollar in foreign aid, and this is unilateral transfer. Unilateral means one directional, not uh, uh, not a um, bilateral. Okay, so this should be unilateral transfer okay and we are spending money so money coming out so that's negative it's a debit number five Americans invested 35 million in German common stock and this is a long-term security investment and we should call it portfolio investment and Americans are spending money so that's a debit Number six, American bought a factory in India for $55 million. So if we buy a factory, that's definitely not security investment. It should be called a foreign direct investment or FDI. And when Americans are spending money, then that is a debit. Number seven, a Japanese investor bought a hotel in Florida for $60 million. $60 million. So this again is FDI because we're talking about uh, uh, the uh, facilities and all the hardware, not securities. And this is uh, a credit because we're receiving money from the Japanese. Number eight, Dell sold of 12 million worth of computers to Mexico. So that's uh, a merchandise. Okay, that's the merchandise. It's a tangible goods, and uh, we sell to the Mexicans, so this would be a credit. We are receiving money from them. 
Number nine, American banks paid $15 million in interest to British investors. And this is definitely a negative 15 because we are paying money to the British, and this should be characterized as a factor income. The British are making money from their investment in our country, and we are um, making the interest payment to them. Number 10, Japanese investors about 18 million worth of U.S. Treasury bonds. Okay, this is not bills, this is a bond, and a bond is for long term. So this is about portfolio investment, and we are making money, we are receiving money from them. So that's a positive $18 million credit. Number 11, U.S. residents give 50 million gifts to their relatives in Argentina. And this is a unilateral transfer, and we are spending $50 million. So let's put it here. Number 12, American invested $30 million in Italian certificate of deposit. So you know certificate deposit, the CDs are a bank uh, invest, a, a bank deposit. So it's for short term, last for three months, and it could be renewed every quarter. So this is a short term investment. And when we're investing overseas, that's a negative. Okay. Number 13, the Germans bought 30 million worth of U.S. wheat. Wheat is an agricultural product, so it's a merchandise, and uh, we sell to the Germans, so we are making money, that's a credit. Number 14, U.S. investors received 12 million in dividend income from Canada, and this is a factory income. Um, we buy, Canadian stocks, and now we get paid with the dividends generated from that stock. So this is also a positive, um, that's a credit. Number 15, Fidelity paid $40 million for reinsurance to lawyers of London. So we are paying the British for sure. So that's a debit, negative 14. But what should we characterize this? What are we paying for? We are paying for insurance, and insurance is a type of service. Okay, so after we get all of this, we should uh, uh, find a way to um, organize them and uh, get the subtotal. So you have the balance of a trade. So balance of a trade would uh, uh, include a balance of a merchant dies trade okay and uh, you also need to add the uh, services so let me just uh, focus on the uh, balance of merchandise trade so what are this this would be merchandise here and also merchandise here we sell tangible goods and for balance of a trade then it's not just a merchandise, it also includes services. So we're gonna have balance of merchandise trade plus the services here and the services here. Okay. And then we have uh, unilateral transfers and also uh, factory income. And all together of this would give us a balance of uh, current account. Okay, that comes from the balance of a trade plus unilateral transfer. So we have unilateral transfer here and uh, here. Okay, and then we also have factor income here and here. Okay, all together, that's our balance of uh, current account. And now let's uh, talk about the balance of uh, capital account. So the balance of a capital account would uh, include the FDI, so foreign direct investment here and here, and also portfolio investment here, here, and also short-term investment in securities here 
here and uh, here. Okay. So what is the overall balance? The overall balance would be the summation of those two. So it is uh, the balance of capital account plus balance of uh, current account. So this is a negative eight. So at the end of the year, we are running a deficit in uh, overall balance. The deficit comes from a 32 surplus in current account and a 40 million deficit in capital account. And then how do we deal with that uh, deficit? We are going to cash out some of our reserves, the uh, balance of uh, reserve account will be cashed out. We have uh, reserves in gold, in foreign currencies, and now we need to sell some of those and get the uh, US dollars. So by, sale, by selling the reserves, we are receiving uh, the negative of uh, this uh, balance. So we are receiving $8 million from the reserves, which are used to uh, cover this uh, surplus to make the entire accounting book balance to zero. So the answer here is uh, provided at the end of the PowerPoint.